I started this video a few minutes ago and was halfway through it when the bread maker in the background decided to go into some kind of spin mode or and it started going yum 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 la 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 and just killed my video so rather than just cut that part out I thought I would start all over again because there were some other things that were wrong with it too but anyway this is a question and answer video for uh, subscriber Jimmy Duff. I'm using his name. Yes, you hear it here. I'm using his full name. And the only reason why is because his questions are great questions and he's not. there's nothing personal about them. They're good questions that anybody could ask. So Jimmy, I hope you don't mind. You did say that I could make a video from it, even though you didn't say I could use your last name. I don't really see anything wrong with it. I hope you don't mind, but that's the way it's going to be for this one. And as soon as I come back, we'll get started. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Roger! Hello there! So, Jimmy asked some good questions. He wrote to me Hi, Don, Jimmy Duff here. I'm a longtime fan, first time caller. I used to hear that back on radio show, radio talk shows, when people say, first time, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, I enjoy your videos and with the exception of the driving ones have watched them all. The other drivers and traffic conditions make me nervous. Well, Jimmy, you should be in my shoes. You know, come to Monta and I'll let you drive my car. All right, we'll, we'll just take a little trip down the road here. We'll just, we'll go down the Malacan, okay? And let you experience what it's like. So, Anyway, I want to make sure I'm recording here. Okay, so here's some good questions here. You only asked five questions, so it's going to be kind of a short video, but these are good questions, okay? Number one, what is the best way to get from Waikil to Cuenca? So everybody knows that I really like personal drivers, private drivers. There are several around. I always recommend Juan Zambrano and his team. He has an excellent team. He, uh, most of these drivers speak English. Some speak Mars no English. A couple of them don't speak any English at all. And, you know, maybe that's okay too. But he has a great team of drivers. And in Waikil, there's a guy. I have not yet met this guy. I've been here two years, and I have yet to meet Marcelo. Talked to him. I talked to him. I chatted with him on WhatsApp. He's a, he lives in Waikil. He's the perfect person to take you to Cuenca. I'll give you all of this contact information in the description, and you can contact him on WhatsApp, and hopefully he's available for you, okay? Now, I'm not saying that that's the only way to go. You could take a taxi, for that matter, or you could take a bus, okay? The best bus line that I've heard about here in Ecuador is the La Reina, L A. R I E N I A, or, or no, it's not I A. It's the end with the little, little squiggly thing over the end. It's La Reina. That's supposed to be the best bus line in Ecuador, from what I've been told. Some people may have a different opinion, but you know, you heard it from me. Okay, that's that's what I've heard, and it's super cheap. How much? Who cares? It's dirt cheap. It's less than twenty bucks. Okay, it's so cheap that you don't really need to know how much it costs. Okay, you could do the same thing coming back. You, you say you're going to go, I think one of your next other questions, how much, but best way to get to Monta from Cuenca. Same thing, same answer, Jimmy. The way, when I went to Cuenca last year, Juan Zambrano drove me all the way in his taxi, his car. He spent the night in, in Cuenca, then the next morning, he drove back to Waikil and he picked up somebody else and took him to Monta. That was, to me, that was, I felt so safe going there because, number one, I know Juan, and I feel, I have all the confidence in the world in him, and in his professionalism, his, his attitude, his whole demeanor, he's just a great person to be in a car with. I'm telling you, you'll have a, you'd have a great time with him. So, but... He took me all the way there, and then when I got there, and when I got to Cuenca, 
I, I met Victor. And Victor, I did, a, I did a video about him. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. And he took me and showed me around Cuenca in a half a day, you know, and it was very inexpensive. And then I also used him to drive me back to Waikil when I was on my return trip to Monte. He drove me back to Waikil, and then I, I met with McGill, who's another one of Juan Zambrano's team members. And McGill, super nice guy. He doesn't speak as much English, but he's a perfect Spanish teacher, and he'll teach you Spanish on the way back, and he'll get you back to Monte safely, okay? That's the important thing. So, I say, number one, if you can afford it, you may not want to spend the money, and I would perfectly understand it. I would hire Juan Zambrano and his team and make, let him take care of all your arrangements for you. Okay, if you don't want to do that, get the bus. Take the bus. Don't take a taxi. Just take a bus, okay? And, of course, you know, you'll get all your warnings about taking buses. Like, don't leave your luggage under the seat. You know, take... You can check your luggage underneath, but if somebody gets on the bus and wants to help you, say no thank you, okay? And and keep your, if you have a backpack, just keep it in your lap or right in between your feet or something, you know, just keep it close by, okay? Your second question, is it better to stay in a hotel or Airbnb? Well, everybody knows how I feel about Airbnb. I, I don't recommend Airbnb at all. Airbnb is a thorn in my side and has been since they came into existence. I have absolutely no use and don't recommend them and no use for Airbnb. And I know a lot of you people are gonna come in the comments and say, I think Airbnb is awesome. They're so perfect. I had a wonderful experience with Airbnb. Well, good for you. I'm happy for you. I'm beside myself with joy that somebody got to enjoy Airbnb. Because I sure didn't. So, anyway, I live in a building here. There's only two apartments on my floor, and one of them is an Airbnb. And guess which one? That one ain't. It's not mine. It's the one next door. And any time I've ever had a problem up here, it's been associated with that Airbnb. Every time. So, anyway, hotel, if you go, if you go into Cuenca, I recommend Grand Colombian Suites. Okay, it's a super neat place. It's got a great big foyer, big uh, atrium in the center. It's a really classic old, you know, European style uh, hotel suites. Ask for one of the suites in the back of the place. You don't want to be on the street because uh, they say that the train via goes by and it rings a bell and it wakes people up. But, you know, it may not bother, it may not bother you, you know. I don't know that it would bother me, you know, but, um, you know, that's that's one place. There's also Oro Verde has a hotel in Gringolandia. Okay, Oro Verde. They also have Airbnbs in there. They also have short-term, long-term rentals. Okay, so those are two choices for places to stay. I, me personally, I I don't do Airbnb. I would go to a hotel. But there are plenty of Airbnbs in Cuenca and in Monta. Now we'll go so far as to say. I believe that the Airbnbs will probably be better in Cuenca than most that you'll find here in Monta. If you stay at an Airbnb here in Monta, stay out of the Mykonos, the Poseidon, the Wyndham Hotel. Stay away from those places if you want sleep, okay? Especially on the weekends, all right? Especially on the weekends. And when you get to Monta, if you want to stay at a... At a hotel, you can stay at the Belandra, which is over on the other side of the mall. It's a beautiful place. It's been there for a long time. It's awesome. It's kind of a block off the Malcom, but it's pretty quiet, and I never really hear any complaints about the place. Oro Verde is right down the street here. There's also the Voyager Hotel right here behind where I live. Uh, I've got several friends that have stayed in there. It's reasonably priced. You can probably have a better chance of getting a room in there you know, then the Oral Verde. Maybe it depends on the time of the year. You're coming in, I think you said you were coming August 19th with your wife. Uh, I don't think there's anything special going on in that time frame, so you could probably pretty easily get a room at any place around here, okay? So, uh, I hope that answers your question. 
I, I know somebody that rented an Airbnb here in Monta that they had to walk up concrete stairs to get up to the second floor of this building. There were no handrails on the stairwell and there were no windows. That's it. Airbnb with no windows. Concrete room. No windows. Needed to stay. They didn't stay there very long. Okay, but anyway. Off of Airbnb. Number three, how much cash should I bring? Well, you can bring me a thousand bucks. <laughs> no, no um, you know, depending on what your spending habits are. I mean, I, I came with a thousand dollars. And the best recommendation, well, here's, 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 I'll give some advice. All right? I know that's a real shocker for some of you because not, you, everybody knows I don't give advice, but here is some. Here's some advice that I can stand behind and you can't really argue with me about it. Don't bring $100 bills and $50 bills. Leave them at home. Bring 20s, 10s, 5s, and 1s. Okay? Bring an ATM card, a debit card. There We have ATMs all over the place. You know? And But keep, keep the big stuff at home. You'll have a hard time getting rid of it. You'll get rid of it. But boy, what a hassle. I had a guy almost in tears begging me one time to break a $100 bill for him. I said, I wouldn't take it because I didn't want to go through all the trouble trying to get rid of it myself. So, $1,000 ought to be plenty. You know, and if, if you don't feel comfortable bringing that much, bring 500 and be prepared to use the ATM machine. Okay? And by the way, in Cuenca, there are two change machines I know of. One of them is in the Mercado, down in the historical district, down the street from Sunrise Cafe. And there's one in the mall, the big mall there. And you can put a $20 bill in there and get all the coin change you want, okay? I think they give you like $15 in dollar coins and $5 in quarters, all right? They don't have anything like that in Monta. It's a little different story in Monta. I should do a class on cash management in Monta. Monts is a whole different story anyway. So anyway, so that's number three. Num number four, best way to get to Monta from Wink Creek, I already answered that. Okay, personal driver or a bus. You could fly, but you'd have to fly through Quito and you'd miss out on a hell of a drive. The drive from Cuenca to Guayaquil is a beautiful drive. Beautiful drive. God, you see some scenery that just take your breath away. I can't say that about White Hill to Monta, Pothole City. I mean, it's like, it's a different world. The coastal region compared to the Andes Mountains, which is where Cuenca is, two completely different countries as far as I'm concerned. I could probably do a separate video just on that topic alone. And then number five, your last question, can Miss Stella arrange a short one-week rental? Don't count on it. Okay, you'd be better off to get to, heaven forbid, Airbnb. Stella only does six months and up, you know. Maybe she'll do some 90 days. But, no, she, there, there, it, to be honest with you, there's not enough money in it for her to justify the work that it takes to get you into a place, get a lease agreement, do the inventory on the place, she gets no commission for that, hardly anything. And so she doesn't deal with them. I, and I don't blame her. I don't think anybody does. You could contact her. She may know some people that might rent their place out for a couple of weeks. That's always a possibility. But please, if you're just only going to be here for a couple of weeks, stick with Airbnb or hotel. And then you said, actually, there is one more question. You said, are you available for a meal? Well, I'm always available for a meal. When you meet me, it takes one look and you'll know I never miss a meal in my life. I mean, I'm not that big, but I'm, I can definitely lose 50 pounds. Well, maybe 20 pounds. But anyway, uh, sure, I'm always available for a meal. I like to eat breakfast. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I've had a couple people not meet me for breakfast because they're just too damn lazy to get out of the bed and get awake. You know, the young people coming here that want to party and late at night and they can't get up for breakfast, you know. Oh, well, it's their loss, you know. <laughs> but
But that's, I, I say that with peace and love, okay? So anyway, that's my answer to your questions. Jimmy, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Lots of people will respond. You can get on my Discord channel and ask questions. There are always people available for answering questions that live here and they can help you. And please keep in touch with me. Let me know when you're going to get here. And if you have any trouble getting a hold of Juan or anybody, let me know, okay? I'll help you out. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me. And I say that with peace and love. See you folks on the next one. Ciao, ciao. By the way, next week's video will be about the IBA tax refund process. I'll have it ready by then. Okay, ciao, ciao.